So we're here at the UN Climate Talks in Durban in South Africa. Why is it significant that these talks are being held in Africa? Well, poor people in developing countries are suffering the impacts of climate change and um, they have done the least but yet they are the most affected and this is an injustice. African countries especially uh, will be very affected and uh, they have done uh, the contribution to climate change is minimum. So, uh, more than everything else, uh, it is a justice issue. Um, so highlighting uh, the consequences of climate change in Africa during an African COP and the need for action uh, is, is of great importance here. And is there a big climate justice movement in Africa? Have, have we seen a lot of activism around this conference? Yeah, we have been a, a great African mobilization happening uh, this year. And it has happened especially through African caravans. So there were two key initiatives actually working together, uh, traveling um, from East Africa all the way to South Africa. One of, one of them was the, 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 the Trans-African Climate Caravan of Hope which is led by PACTA, the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. Um, this caravan travel around 10 different countries. Um, they were mobilizing and educating people about the impacts of climate change. Um, they were raiding, ra raising people's voices, concerns, and also making lobbying po po African politicians along the way so that African leaders put pressure on developed nations to take action on climate change. Um, as they mentioned a number of times on the caravan, the main objective is to have uh, one Africa, one, one, one voice, one message, the, the rights of Africa united together and, and defended. And some of the negotiators, especially from rich countries, have been playing down expectations ahead of these talks. What are kind of the big asks that campaigners and activists want to achieve here? Uh, I think there are two, there are two main messages uh, that the African mobilization has been delivered. The first one is about the future of the Kyoto Protocol. It's a, a, they, they have really um, highlighting the, the fact that we need to have a legally binding agreement. Developed countries need to play their, their part. They have to do their homework and continue to cut uh, their, their emissions. So uh, they have, we must avoid uh, the, catastroph the catastrophic impacts of climate change that will affect uh, Africa so much. So the future of the Kyoto Protocol, which is at stake at this COP, is one of the key issues. The second one is about actually um, the equity issue, the, the sharing, the effort. So um, Africa and other and poor people in other developing countries need, they have the right to develop and adapt to climate change. So uh, the delivery of climate finance for both mitigation and adaptation is critical. Um, it's, we, we in, here in this COP, uh, we really need to safeguard the rights of developing countries and poor people to continue to develop, but develop in a clean way. Uh, so uh, I guess this is one of the biggest challenges we have ahead. And uh, I guess that we'll hear a lot more noise from African civil society during this COP delivering the, these, these messages. And what would be your dream outcome at the end of these talks? Something that's realistic and yet also you know, would be a good result. Um, and how can people watching around the world and back in the UK help to make this happen? I think it's especially back in the, the, the UK it's really critical that people keep putting pressure on the British government and on the EU to show the leadership and to move forward uh, an, an agreement here uh, in, in, in Durban. I think uh, a, a, great, a good outcome is actually a continuation of the, the Kyoto pr Protocol and a real commitment uh, to deliver the climate justice so much needed uh, for uh, people in Africa and, and elsewhere around the world. Mariana, thank you very much for joining us.